look like someone's 80 year old grandfather with a sweater glasses combo. Can I make it happen? So today I decided I need to go book shopping. I don't need to, but I want to. And I want to take you guys with me. I feel like it's highly appropriate to kick off the new year by stocking up on some new books. As if I do not have enough stock already. I am just in the mood to soak up the atmosphere of a Barnes & Noble. It's a little bit gray, it's a little bit cloudy, it's Friday, I just got paid. And I'm just in the mood to buy some new books for the new year. I don't necessarily have a plan. I do not have a list in mind of any specific books that I wanna get. Actually, there is one book I'm gonna look for and that is Mother's Instinct by Barbara, Barbara something. Um, I'll explain if I can find it. But mostly we're going just to browse. Mostly we're just going to feel the vibes. Of course, I'm gonna do a haul after because I also have a few other books I've acquired here and there that I wanna show you. So yeah, we're just gonna go and have a good time. Hopefully. I don't see why we wouldn't, unless someone's mean to me. Let's go. It's obviously the next day. I quite literally ran out of daylight yesterday because I spent so much time at Barnes. I was probably in there for a good two and a half, three hours. One of my favorite things to do, okay? But I'm actually very pleased and excited with all of the books that I found yesterday. Like I said, I also have some other books that I have acquired over the past couple of weeks that I also want to show you. But for now, I'm just going to start with the ones that I got yesterday. First of all, I was able to find Mother's Instinct by Barbara Abel. This is the one book that I was specifically looking for. I wanted this because this is actually coming out as a movie later this year with Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain, which already that's enough. I'm there. The trailer was just released. I watched it. It looks so good. So when I found out it was based on a book, I knew I needed to get it. I almost want to wait until after I watch the movie to read this just so I don't spoil anything, which I mean, either way, the story is going to be spoiled. But sometimes I almost like reading books after I've seen them as the movie or TV show because then I can just, I can picture things better. But this is about the Brunels and the Genios. I think this is translated from, from French. This is translated from French, so their names are French. They are inseparable friends who live next door to each other in a tranquil suburb. Their sons, born in the same year, grow up together as closest brothers. But when one of the boys is killed in an accident, the idyllic world of both couples shatters. The Genios are consumed by grief and bitterness for their lost son, while the Brunels are racked with guilt for their role in the tragedy. Soon the couples are barely speaking. Then mysterious accidents begin to happen to the Brunel's son, raising their suspicions about their former friends. I don't know. The trailer looked really good, really intense, and nine times out of ten, the book is better than the movie, so I do have high expectations for this. This next book has been on my TBR for so long. I honestly think it's probably one of the first books I ever added to my like Goodreads want to read shelf. This is The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker. This is a thriller and I have not been reading a lot of thrillers lately. The back says, meet Chrissy. Chrissy is eight and has a secret. She just killed a boy. 
The feeling made her belly fizz like soda pop. Her playmates are tearful and their mothers are terrified, keeping them locked indoors. But Chrissy rules the roost. She's the best at wall walking, she knows how to get free candy, and now she has a feeling of power that she never gets at home, where food is scarce and attention is scarcer. So a baby psychopath. 20 years later, adult Chrissy is living in hiding under a changed name, and all she wants is for her daughter to have the childhood she herself was denied. That's why the threatening phone calls are so terrifying. People are looking for them. Nancy Tucker leaves the reader breathless as she inhabits her protagonist with a shocking authenticity that moves one from sympathy to humor to horror to heartbreak and back again. So you're telling me I'm gonna feel all of these things about our main character, who is also a murderer. I'm intrigued. This also says that the author studied psychology at Oxford and now works in mental health, which I also found quite interesting. I also grabbed another psychological thriller that I believe- oh. Um, I believe this is also a new release. This is Anna O by Matthew Blake. This is about a woman named Anna who one night stabs two people to death in her sleep. She was dubbed Sleeping Beauty by the tabloids and has a rare psychosomatic disorder known as resignation syndrome. I think she then works with this forensic psychologist who specializes in like sleep homicides. This was just sitting on one of those tables right by the door when you walk in. And one of my reading goals for the new year was to read more books that I find kind of just naturally instead of reading the majority of books that I see other people talking about online, book talk, booktube. I also just thought this cover was so cool and like I like the pink. I also got The Daydreams by Laura Hankin. This is another one that I kind of just came across as I was doing my browsing. I haven't really seen this talked about by anyone else, but this is about the stars of like a popular teen TV show from the 2000s. It says, during the live season two finale, it all imploded, leaving everyone scrambling to understand why. So I guess they have all since then gone their separate ways. It says one's a lawyer, one is the bored wife of a famous athlete, one is still famous, and one has become a cautionary tale. So now it's like a certain amount of years later. Yeah, 2018, so it's like 14 years later, and they're doing a reunion special where they will tentatively rediscover the magic of the original show and old secrets will resurface. This just reminded me of something that like Taylor Jenkins Reid would write, like the premise of this book reminded me of like Daisy Jones and the Six or Seven Husbands, and I really liked those two books. So I'm hoping this will be a good one as well. So lastly from Barnes yesterday, I got Before We Were Innocent by Ella Berman. This is one of Reese Witherspoon's book club picks. And Reese Witherspoon, I feel like that woman knows what she's doing. Her book club picks are usually pretty good. This says, 10 years ago after a sun-soaked summer spent in Greece, best friends Bess and Joni were cleared of having any involvement in their friend Evangeline's death. But that didn't stop the media from ripping apart their teenage lives like vultures. While the girls were never convicted, Joni, ever the opportunist, capitalized on her newfound infamy to become a motivational speaker. Bess, on the other hand, resolved to making her life as small and controlled as possible so she wouldn't risk losing everything all over again. Except now Joni needs a favor, and when she turns up at her old friend's doorstep asking for an alibi, Bess has no choice but to say yes. Can you ever be an innocent woman when everyone wants you to be guilty? I thought that sounded really good, so I got it. Now we're moving on to the other books that I have just acquired from here and there. Over the past couple of weeks, these next two specifically I ordered from Blackwell's in the UK. I got Right by Sarah Rose Etter and The Alyssas by Samantha Leach. Now I do have to admit, if I don't like a cover of a book or it's only out in hardback, I will go out of my way to look for it elsewhere and potentially order it from a different country. Blackwell's is usually my go-to because they will have the UK covers and sometimes they'll have paperback out before the US does. Also, there's no extra shipping costs, so why wouldn't I? For example, they had the paperback version of Right, and they had this alternate cover. Even though I do like the one out in the US, I like this one a little bit better. This is about Cassie, who is trapped in a corporate nightmare between long hours, toxic bosses, and unethical projects. She struggles to reconcile the glittering promise of a city where obscene wealth lives alongside abject poverty. Startup burnouts leap into the paths of commuter trains and men literally set themselves on fire in the streets. That sounds like something. Like, it also has like these illustrations and then these definitions at the start of the chapters. I don't know, this book is just like aesthetically pleasing to me. 
but I am also actually excited to read it. And then I got the Alyssa's by Samantha Leach because they had the paperback and we only have the hardback in the US right now. I don't remember where exactly I first saw this. It might have been on TikTok, but I don't remember like the context. I think this is about a girl whose best friend gets sent away to one of those like teen reform programs like i'm thinking those programs where they basically kidnap the teenagers in the middle of the night and then make them like live in the wilderness for a month i don't know what i'm talking about but her best friend gets sent to one of those and then ends up dead so this is like true crime mystery also a genre i have not read in a while now this next one is really out of my comfort zone and that is jane eyre by charlotte bronte i got this on a separate barnes trip and i just kept going back to it i could not put it down for some reason this special edition cover is just so cool it like it gives me tim burton vibes and if that is the vibe of the book then i think i can get into it i say this is out of my comfort zone just because i am so not a classics reader i want to be i've tried many times well not that many times but i just think that those girlies who read pride and prejudice this other books by charlotte bronte i think they're just so cool and I want to keep trying. So if any of you guys are classics readers and you actually like enjoy them and you have some advice, let me know. Also, side note, this candle, this candle that I have burning behind me right here, I don't think you can tell that it's burning. It is a new scent from Bath & Body Works called Book Loft. I'm obsessed with it. I didn't think I would like it at first because it's a, like a fresh powdery linen scent and I go for spicier scents, but I'm into this letting you know. I only have one nonfiction book in this haul and that is Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. This is another one I've had on my TBR for such a long time. This is like social science-y, psychology. It is all about the influence and power of language. This says, what makes cults so intriguing and frightening? What makes them powerful? Montel argues that the key to manufacturing intense ideology, community, and an us-them attitude all comes down to language in both positive and shadowy ways. Now I majored in psychology and sociology in school, so I always feel like I'm looking for nonfiction books that kind of fill that educational psychological void in my life. I also just love cults. Not like, woo, let's go join a cult. More like, I just think they're so interesting and I love to read about them and watch documentaries about them. Like that Mother God cult on HBO. That was crazy. Now these next couple go along with my little history kick that I mentioned I've been on in my last video. I got The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This is so many people's like favorite book. And like I said, I'm very into like historical fiction right now. So I figured I would give it a shot. This takes place in Florence in the 1550s. This is about Lucrezia, who is the daughter of a duke. And I guess her older sister was supposed to marry this other ruler, but her older sister dies. And so her dad forces her instead to marry this guy. First of all, I would be pissed. I would be so angry. This says, having barely left girlhood behind, Lucrezia must now enter an unfamiliar court whose customs are opaque and where her arrival is not universally... Who is not universally welcomed. So yes, I'm just very interested to see why this is like so loved. Also this cover, this cover is beautiful. I also got When We Lost Our Heads by Heather O'Neill. Again, I love this cover. I think this is like a Marie Antoinette spin-off type of thing. Honestly, I don't know. This says charismatic Marie Antoine is the daughter of the richest man in 19th century Montreal. She has everything she wants except for a best friend until clever scheming Sadie Arnett moves to the neighborhood. Immediately united by their passion and intensity, Marie and Sadie's games soon become tinged with risk, even violence. Forced to separate by the adults around them, the two spend years engaged in acts of alternating innocence and depravity. And when a singular event brings them back together the dizzying effects will upend the city so it's not like based off of marie antoinette because it takes place in canada in the 1800s we'll see i just thought it looked really good and there's a comment from mona awad on the front she says this is a dazzling delicious dream and that's honestly all i need to know and then finally the last book i have in my haul is thirst for salt by madeline lucas i think this is about a girl who gets in a relationship with an older man i think he's like 20-ish years older than her and she's telling the story after the fact like when they're no longer together this says it's a magnetic and unforgettable story of desire and its complexities and a powerful reckoning with memory loss and longing i think i saw cameron on tiktok talking about this her account is slaggy book club and she always has really really good literary fiction recommendations but that wraps up my little book haul well it's not little
let me be realistic. But let me know if you liked my book shopping vlog. I'll do more of them in the future. Let me know if you have or have read any of these books, what you think of them. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you decide to stick around and I'll see you in the next one.